Today I'm going to talk a little bit about setting up profiles and schedules on your Eero Mesh network. Most of what I say today will apply to any current Eero device. Please watch to the end. I'll share some best practices on setting up profiles efficiently, granting admin access, and setting up DDNS. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe. This is Finding Virtual. Best practices for setting up profiles on your Eero include making sure you set up profile types based on user activity or the users themselves. If you have a family with multiple devices, having a profile for each family member can make a lot of sense. Be sure when you bring a device online, you name it immediately. It gets very difficult if you bring 20 devices online and you forget to name them as you bring them on. So a quick note on profiles and bridge mode. If you are bridging your Eero network to allow your gateway from your internet provider to manage the wireless, you will not have access to profiles. I am currently using AT&T. I've set up pass-through so that my AT&T gateway allows Eero to control the wireless network. Since Eero controls the wireless network and I'm not bridging or passing through from Eero back to the gateway, profiles are still available. To create a profile, enter the Eero app. Ensure that you are online. You cannot create a profile if you're not online. If your router is available, scroll down to the available devices and pick the device that you would want to create a profile for. The devices themselves do not need to be online. As you can see, this device is not. Click on Profiles. You have a list of available profiles that you may have created before. You can select any of these that would apply. Equally, you can add a profile. Give it a name. You can see the profiles attached to this device. I can then go back to the Home tab, and you'll see under Profiles, my new profile is available. I can open it up, and I have the ability to add other devices. This one does not have a profile attached because there's a little box. I will check this. These others are already attached to other profiles. So let's take the two available devices and we'll hit save. As you can see, I have all three devices attached to the profile. From here, I can turn on ad blocking. I can set a schedule. Available schedules may be listed above, or I could create a new one. Give it a time. Select the days this schedule would apply to. Ensure that you have a name. And also ensure that that name is not the same name as your previous schedule. Hit save. And it's easy as that. Now during the period of time where this schedule evaluates to true, said another way, after 9 o'clock, internet will not be available on any of these devices. If you pay for the subscription service from Eero, you have the ability to do further content filtering and blocking. You can select the content filters and you can see there's a whole list of presets based on age group you can select from. Equally, you can take more granular control. I may choose certain apps should not be available. I may also choose 
specific content or apps based on their type that I don't want available on these devices. And I can hit save. And all of these content filters will apply to this entire profile. Now you can do the same thing on a device by device basis, but I find it much more efficient to group your devices by profile. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I can also block specific sites that's blacklisting or allow specific sites on this device. Here I will, here I will block the site test.com just as an example and hit save. Now these devices on this profile cannot access that domain. Allowed sites. I can go through and add whatever sites that I would choose to allow. That's whitelisting. The content filters and blocked apps and sites come with Eero Plus. If you want access to that capability, you'll need to purchase the subscription service. Now let's talk a little bit about best practices in selecting and choosing profiles. I have found it's best to create profiles based on the type of device connecting to your Wi-Fi. Equally, I found it helpful to group devices based on their users. You can see here I have profiles created for specific family members. I can go into these profiles and see which devices are attached. I also have a profile for family entertainment. This contains the Switch gaming console and all of the smart TVs. I name them based on the room they're in. I'll tell you a little bit about naming in a moment. But this allows me to take any shared devices and manage them separately. I also have a profile for peripherals. So currently this is our wireless printer. You may have other printers or devices that are shared across the home available wirelessly. I found it very helpful to group those and manage those separately. Equally, you can create a guest network. That can be done by going to settings, guest access, and turning it on. You can see I've already enabled this. You may choose to also manage your guest devices in their own profile for guests that come to your home regularly. I've created a profile for this as well. With Eero Plus, you can set up dynamic DNS. That allows your dynamic network, provided by most home internet providers, to act like a static network. Some of the benefits of DDNS include the ability to externally monitor your security systems, manage your devices, including IoT devices and smart home devices, and for the gamers out there, the ability to set up a private network for your friends to join and play games over the internet without having to worry about a network disruption. Eero will manage the dynamic DNS list for you. To set up DDNS, open your Eero app. Ensure you are connected. Click on settings. Click on network settings. In this case, we're gonna select dynamic domain name service, DDNS, and enable it. This will allow me to treat my dynamic network provided by my internet provider as a static network. The benefit of this is if I have smart home devices, security systems, cameras, or other IoT devices that I would need to access remotely, changes from my IP provider or internet provider to my dynamic address will not interfere with my ability to manage or access devices on my network remotely. Eero will manage the DNS names to track any dynamic changes to my network so it behaves like a static IP address. 
setting things up this way will allow you to also set up game servers or private networks that are more resilient and less risky to any network changes that might disrupt gameplay. You have the ability to do port forwarding. You can go into the features here and set up any firewall rules or add any reservations. Reservations and firewall rules, IP reservations allow you to keep the same IP address for a particular device. Firewall rules may be used for certain applications, like games, which need direct connections to other devices on the internet. One thing to note when setting up dynamic DNS or DDNS, it may trigger a reset to your network to propagate any new information. If I want to grant administrator access to a member of the household, hit settings, click network users, and click on invite an admin. A screen will show up that tells you a little bit about what each administrator can do. You can learn more about permissions if you need to by clicking this link and I can click the invite button. A QR code will show up that allows the other member of your household to take a picture of the QR code and it'll take them through the administrative approval process. You can also share a link down below if the person is not able to use the QR code. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe. That lets us know that you're interested in us providing you more content like this. Thank you for watching Finding Virtual. I'll see you next time.